cranial nerve and now for a while third cranial nerve has not only somatomotor and visceromotor parasympathetic fiber but also have visceromotor sympathetic fiber and then parasympathetic will go with lower domain which every good doctor know very good doctor only know that sympathetic fibers are going along with the upper domain and they supply to the levator palpebrae superioris involuntary component am i clear to everyone so this was all about what oh, upper domain now we come to the lower domain out of this lower domain somatomotor fiber number one they go to what is this medial rectus number two fibers go to inferior rectus here was inferior oblique inferior rectus now these fibers from the lower domain went into medial rectus then these fibers went to yes inferior rectus what is left now to the inferior yes oblique and these fibers go to inferior oblique now here you need to understand the parasympathetic fiber started with the main oculomotor nerve they went along with that in the cavernous sinus they are with parasympathetic and somatomotor fiber sympathetic fibers also came then as it exited upper branch and lower branch upper branch has somatomotor fibers with sympathetic fibers lower branch has somatomotor fiber with yes. parasympathetic fibers parasympathetic fiber go along the lower domain right on the way lower domain give branch to medial rectus and inferior rectus and then parasympathetic fibers go along the final branch which is going towards yeah. inferior yeah. oblique through, through, uh, but they don't end up here on the way they will find what is there cell yeah. ganglion these fibers this branch which branch yeah. inferior branch from the third cranial nerve lower domain branch going to the inferior oblique give a short parasympathetic root gives a short parasympathetic root to what cell ganglion here these preganglionic fibers of parasympathetic nervous system uh, neurons we started from a dinger westfall in the midbrain they terminate from here the post ganglionic fibers emerge which fibers emerge post ganglionic fibers emerge as short cell nerve they emerge as short cell nerve and then the pairs there are about about 8 to 10 short cell nerves which have parasympathetic post ganglionic fibers later on in ciliary ganglion i will explain they also have some sensory fibers and sympathetic fiber that i will explain well later but these parasympathetic fibers post ganglionic enter into what is this area yes eyeball and they move forward between the sclera and the choroid there are three layers there is sensory layer of retina then more outer to that is choroidal layer and then more outer to that is scleral so these fibers move forward between what sclera and sclera outside and choroid this is the choroid inside and eventually they reach forward anteriorly there they give branch to a very important muscle here and this muscle is called ciliaris what is this ciliaris right which help the lens to change its shape ciliaris muscle and here it is constrictor pupillae my friend this is constrictor pupillae right dilator is here so this is constrictor pupillae what is it constrictor pupillae when it will contract people will constrict when these fibers will contract people will dilate right because these fibers are attached here so when they contract dilate but i'm not going to detail what i want to tell you as these fibers are moving forward on the way most of their branches are given to ciliary muscle or ciliaris and then terminal fibers they move forward and eventually supply what constrictor pupillae right they give the constrictor pupillae so dinger west fall nucleus that gave preganglionic fibers which originated from the midbrain to that nucleus 
went along the somatomotor fiber of third cranial nerve and eventually went to, into its inferior division and branched to the inferior oblique and then exit from there as a short route to ciliary ganglion there they terminate as preganglionic fibers and postganglionic parasympathetic fibers emerge from there as a component of short cell nerves enter into eyeball while piercing the sclera and uh, run between sclera and the choroidal layer and approach the ciliaris about 95% or more fibers are given to ciliaris and remaining fiber eventually innervate the what constrictor pupilli or pupilli i don't know i have never met it right is that clear any question up to this right so let's have a break